we're going to start with a discussion of silicon carbide and gallium nitride. You know, why are we talking about these materials in particular? We're going to go through some considerations for safety since we are going to be talking about high voltage, high current, and just in general high power testing today. And along with that, we're going to talk about some instruments for high power because that is uh, how you use the instruments that you have are really just as important. And then we're going to talk about the tests themselves. We'll run through the connections that might be necessary for you uh, and what you can expect to get from these tests. Let's talk about some equipment insofar as it's relevant to the tests that we're going to be talking about. When using instruments for high power, there's two main categories that you should think about, power supplies and source measure units. Some of the qualities of power supplies are that they can often be cheaper and they can pretty easily get to very high voltages. Whereas source measure units, if you're not familiar with them, offer integrated measurement, uh, generally more precise uh, voltage and current control, as well as four quadrant operations. This means that they can sync power as well as sourcing power. It also means that they can easily go from some positive voltage to some negative voltage without having to flip leads around. That's what the four quadrant operation means. Uh, so these are just two things that, uh, two categories of equipment that you should be sure to look at if you're designing out a uh, high voltage system or a high power system. And we'll talk about throughout the tests as to when you should really consider an SMU or when a power supply is sufficient. In the next few slides, I'm going to talk about a few pieces of Keithley equipment uh, several times. So I just wanted to call them out here um, just so that it's a little bit less confusing, I think, as I'm going through them. One is a 2290, which is a 5 kilovolt or 10 kilovolt power supply. We have They're going to be talking about the 2651A, which is a high current SMU. Its brother, the 2657A, which is a high voltage SMU. The 2470, which is a graphical 1000 volt high voltage SMU. And the 2600B, which is a, sort of a, all around, it's actually a series of different source measure units, but the 2600s are not super high voltage compared to the, the 2657 and the 2470 or really high current. So that's uh, just a general name for most other source measure units. Now we also wanna talk about combining high and low power equipment here. Uh, one of the key things to do whenever you're combining a high power piece of equipment and a low power piece of equipment. And it doesn't have to necessarily be test equipment. Um, it could be just some other device that you have uh, in built into a circuit, into your test circuit. Uh, but this is protection modules. Protection modules most often use something called a transient voltage suppression diode or a TVS diode. And there's the symbol over there on the right. Uh, and there's a picture of one of uh, Keithley's protection modules, our 2290 protection module. But let's look at what these protection modules do. Here is a circuit diagram showing a high voltage power supply uh, testing this diode right here. So it's measuring, this is a diagram to measure the leakage current of this diode. So we're forcing voltage, you'll notice, the wrong way through the diode. Then we have this ammeter over on the right. And you'll notice it's a little bit odd. The protection module, it's, it's measuring current around this protection module. In this state right now, with this diode uh, having the full voltage drop of this high voltage, the protection module is very high impedance, so no current is flowing through that protection module, or at least very little current is flowing through it. Let's look what happens when this diode breaks down, though. All of a sudden, that line now becomes a short, the diode's broken down, and the protection module now becomes a short. That's the beauty of the TVS diode, that at a certain voltage, when it sees that voltage, it turns into a short, or at least closer to a short than uh, a very high impedance device. Now, what this has done is protected our ammeter from seeing all of that high voltage. Ammeters are not designed to experience really, really high voltages. So you could very easily fry that piece of equipment if you weren't using a protection module. Uh, so that's really a very basic thing to do and to use whenever you are uh, combining high and low power equipment. 
Often manufacturers will sell protection modules, but they're not terribly hard to build yourself if you're comfortable doing that or if you could have even a system integrator do that for you. And those two instruments that we're talking about are 2290 power supply and our 2600, that low power SMU, lower power. Now let's talk about combining instruments for higher current. This one is pretty simple. Uh, you know from Kirchhoff's voltage laws, and I'm sure your uh, uh, education, however many years ago it was, that you can put two instruments or two current sources in parallel to get higher current. So that's uh, simply adding up the current that you're sourcing through. So that's a pretty easy thing to do. You can just connect all the lows together, connect all the highs together wherever they need. Low region is a transitional period of when the MOSFET is actually turning on. So you can imagine this area is very important to us for the switching characteristics because this defines how the MOSFET actually turns on uh, and how quickly it turns on. Then when we leave that transition region, the gate voltage continues to rise up. The MOSFET at that point is completely on. Here's a graph of what some of the full results for one of these tests, uh, gate charge test, looks like. You can see that gate voltage curve again. The other blue line that we have now is the drain voltage, and we also have a red line in drain current. Here, it becomes a lot more obvious, if you look closely, that that transitional period is what's turning the MOSFET on because current goes from almost nothing up to a very high level and actually hits current compliance where the instrument limits current sourcing from getting any higher. So again, gate charge is a very important parameter for looking at switching frequency directly related to switching loss that you have. If you can switch faster, then you can get less switching loss. You want that transitional period, that plateau region to be as small as possible. Now this is a test that you really want to run most likely with a full parameter analyzer. This is a test that's pretty hard to run on a batch of individual components. Part of that is because it's uh, hard to design this test out to be very precise. And also you want the instruments to be triggered very closely together. You need a high degree of synchronization between your different source measure units. Uh, so this is one that's a, a built-in test to our 4200A parameter analyzer. Uh, it's a very common one. Uh, and again, a very important characterization test for SICK and GAN components. And finally, now that we've talked about all tests, I did just want to mention this presentation in particular was talking about individual component testing, but there is so much more into the world of SICK and GAN processes, uh, all the way from the very early material development up to integration uh, of devices, which maybe is where this presentation sort of fits in, up through mass production. So if you want to hear more about any of these different areas of SICK and GAN fabrication or the design lifetime of SICK and GAN or other wide band gap components, uh, do be sure to leave a comment uh, in our survey at least letting me know so that we can talk about some of our other solutions and the interesting areas in these other parts of semiconductor commercialization.